Hello, this is Mudusir Muhammad. I'm a technical support specialist at Sigma Life Science. Today I'm presenting to you selecting a qPCR detection chemistry. The overview of this talk will be to discuss different chemistries in the application of qPCR. There are different chemistries owing to the specificity of the qPCR as well as the flexibility of the design of the assay for qPCR. Again, there are advantages and disadvantages of detection chemistry in qPCR assay. This slide shows you the extensive range of detection chemistries used in qPCR. It ranges from DNA binding dye to a variety of probe-based systems. There is a great choice due to two factors. One is patent as discovery of new detection chemistry can help avoid paying a licensing fee to other established detection technologies. With the exception of DNA binding dyes such as CyberGreen 1, etc., all other detection chemistries rely on threat. All the highlighted detection chemistries can be designed and supplied by Sigma Life Science. More importantly from a scientific perspective is to drive to discover more sensitive detection chemistries that can detect low level of fluorescence as compared to the background noise and also accurate measurement and detection of low copy number. qPCR can be used for many different applications such as genotyping, SNP detection, gene expression analysis, quantification of poorly expressed genes and also in vivo assays. The CyberGreen 1 and Techman or dual label probes are most well known and used of qPCR detection chemistries. However, there are others I will discuss in another talk. The alternative detection chemistries and situations where they may be more efficient than CyberGreen and Techman in problematic assays. These are molecular beacons, scorpions and LNA probe chemistries. Now what are the advantages and disadvantages of specific detection chemistries? The CyberGreen 1 dye is one of the most common and well used detection chemistry of qPCR. It does not require the presence of a third DNA target, unlike probe-based chemistries. It's useful for expressing expression profile analysis, mass screening, and microarrays. It's a non-specific dye and it binds to double-stranded DNA, and fluoresces when bound to double-stranded DNA. In solution, it has very low fluorescence. As mentioned, in solution, cyber green has very low fluorescence. When the dye binds to double-stranded DNA, it undergoes a conformational change and subsequently fluoresces. Cyber green is a non-specific and binds to all double-stranded DNA in the reaction tube. It will also detect the presence of primer dimers and fluoresces. Therefore, the fluorescence signal detected is much higher with addition of primer dimers. But you can always identify if primer dimers are affecting your assay or data by doing a mount curve analysis. After qPCR, you can do a mount curve analysis to ensure there is no secondary products in the reaction tube. The cyber green will fluoresce in the presence of non-specific products. In this graph, we observe the change in fluorescence as temperature increases. As it increases, the PCR product will separate denature and cyber green one will drop off. The lower line in this graph or data point shows a product which denatures at lower temperature. It indicates a smaller product doubles, which is double stranded consists of primer dimers. With a bit of maths we can measure the rate of change in fluorescence from the previous slide. In the first graph the majority of products show decrease in fluorescence at 74 to 78 degrees as shorter strand separates at a lower temperature and cyber green drops off. The smaller peak at the lower temperature was in a no template control. Therefore the peak we observe at the lower temperature is due to the separation of primer dimers. In the second graph on the right we observe a peak at a high temperature. This product is larger as the temperature is required for the DNA strand to denature and cyber green to go back into solution. 
This peak is due to amplification of non-genomic DNA containing the sample. Observing amplification of both intronic and extronic sequences. The advantage of using CyberGreen is relatively cheap. It has low fluorescence in solution until it binds to the double-stranded product. When using CyberGreen, there is no probe requirement, hence it's ideal for troubleshooting. It can be sensitive when there are no primer dimers or non-specific genomic DNA amplification. A few of disadvantages of using CyberGreen is its use is quite limited. It can inhibit PCR sometimes. It also recognizes primer dimers, hence it can complicate the interpretation of the assay results. Melt curve analysis is recommended after the assay to show how specific the amplification is when using CyberGreen. Fluorescence is often not proportional to concentration of the template when using CyberGreen. While CyberGreen 1 is a dye, all other qPCR detection chemistries are probe-based with the incorporation of a third target sequence, i.e. the probe, with fluorogenic labels. The fluorescence is based on threat technology. As input of light energy at a specific wavelength is absorbed by the fluorophore, some energy is dissipated as heat and is lost as the fluorophore is excited, and light is emitted as a, at, at a less energetic, longer wavelength. However, this longer wavelength can be absorbed by a second quencher molecule, which again releases some energy as heat and emits at it even at lesser energetic wavelength that is not detected. The quencher absorbs the light and dissipates its majority of it as heat energy. The amplification of the target is measured by corresponding increases fluorescence with each cycle when the quencher is dissociated from the fluorogenic dye. The dual label hydrolysis probe or often called Tachman probes are useful for expression profiling and multiplex assay. This is the most common based chemistry. It is specific and the probes are hydrolyzed during detection. The probe is cleaved during polymerization, effectively separating fluorophore from the quencher which allows it to fluoresce. The probe and the primer requires optimal gap of five bases, and they require a two-step PCR reaction. For. This schematic diagram shows you how dual label fluorescent probe works. Probe has a fluorophore at the five prime and a quencher at the three prime, effectively preventing fluorescence. The probe annealed first, ensuring it is on the sequence as near to the primer. The probes have 10 degrees higher temperature than primer, so it will anneal first to the target. Therefore, tech will not bind until the primer anneals. The moment primer anneals to the target, the tech polymerase extends, which cleaves the probes. If probe is not placed before the primer, it will not be cleaved successfully, hence it reduces accuracy of quantification. Fluorescence occurs when fluorophore is cleaved in the extension phase. Once cleaved, the released fluorophore will continue to fluoresce. Probe is designed to be near the primer on the sense strand, which encourages cleavage rather than displacement during the assay. When using Tachman probe for qPCR, it is often recommended to use a two-step PCR cycle, which involves combined annealing extension phase. Normal PCR the denature at 95 degrees and primer annuals at 65 degrees and the tech extends at 72 degrees. However, tech will extend the moment the primer binds, regardless of the temperature. By carrying out a two-step reaction and not allowing tech to function at optimal kinetics temperature, it, it moves along the strain more slowly. This encourages cleavage of the probe by new, its nucleic assay activity rather than displacing it. The advantage of Tachman is one of the most common probe-based detection system. The probe can be used for many real-time qPCR platforms. 
There is no primer dimer detected as the probe is specific to the target only. The dual label probe, fluorescent probes are very efficient for gene quantification. It's used to measure fluorescence both during qPCR and endpoint. It's very useful for use to be used in a multiplex assay where the simultaneous quantification of multiple genes are required. A few disadvantages of dual label fluorescent probe. It's a less efficient than any other probe based chemistry for detecting SNP and also allelic discrimination. Other probe systems offer greater sensitivity than dual label fluorescent probes. In summary, there are a number of detection chemistries in qPCR which can improve the flexibility and specificity of the design. The selection of qPCR detection system is important and it depends on the, your assay condition. The cyber green one is one of the most simplest and often used chemistries in qPCR and it is also one of the cheapest. The dual label fluorescent probes are more complex, however these are very sensitive and can be very specific in the qPCR quantification. <coughs> I'll briefly describe the melt curve analysis which are used to study the, the non-specific products when using cyber green especially to detect the primer dimers or the genomic contamination in your qPCR assay. If you would like some assistance with the design, you can contact us via www.sigma.com slash designmyprobe. This will take you to the site called Oligo Architect Primer, Primer and Probe Design Solution. Here you can either click Oligo Architect Online, which allows you to design the primers and probe yourself. However, for more complicated asset designs, you can select the second option which is Oligo Architect Consultative Design. With this, you will automatically put through to an expert who will create design for you. Our design also include primers and probe design, multiplex assay design, experimental design and optimization. We also help with troubleshooting and importantly, we do online seminars. Hope you have enjoyed this little talk. Thanks for listening.